I'm joined in studio by author Karen Rose. Karen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for asking me. You arrived in South Africa when? On Wednesday, and today is Tuesday, I think. Right, today's still Tuesday, right? Today's Tuesday. <laughs> and have you been having a good time? I've been having a wonderful time. What have you been up to? We've done um, a fair number of winery tours. Which is, I think, a necessity. Yes, yes, we have. I think we've done, we've done winery tours in three of your wine uh, regions. Okay, which region? We were in um, Costantia mm -hmm. and Wellington and Stellenbosch. Three very good regions. I think when we did like a really quick tour through, how do you pronounce that? Um, uh, f f something. Franschhoek. Franschhoek, yes, <laughs> through there. So yeah, we, we've had a lovely time. Amazing. Well, I'm glad you've been having a good time. You're actually here to talk about your latest book, Watch Your Back. Yes. Um, okay, so you are actually known for writing books that are part of a series, but can also stand alone. Yes. So Watch Your Back is one of these books in the series. Um, when, when you're developing characters, at what point do you think, actually, this character is going to have their own story that I'm going to um, allow my audience to follow? Sometimes. Sometimes I plan it ahead, mm -hmm. and sometimes I know as soon as I meet that character. Um, there have been a lot of characters I never even, I never planned. They were not in my proposal, and those happen. Those usually are the characters that are the strongest um, to get their own book, or the ones that I haven't planned at all. Um, for example, um, now Clay and Stevie, who are the hero and heroine of this book, yeah. were planned, but the hero of the last book, Joseph. I didn't know he was going to get his own book until he walked on the page in the book before and because that heroine's name was Daphne and I didn't know who her hero was going to be. I kind of had this vague picture of him but I didn't know who. And then Joseph is in the scene I'm like oh, of course that's him. Um, so sometimes they just like walk on the scene and take over and I know I know that there's such a strong presence in my mind that they're going to have their own book. It's interesting you say when you meet your characters. <laughs> um, what does that mean? Because obviously you, th you think of them, but take me through what meeting your own um, creation is like. The ones that I've planned are, it, it, that tends not to be such a in your face, like a, the gong moment, you know? Those are uh, a little bit more thoughtful. Um, and sometimes I've known a character, I, I, I hear something on the news or I hear a story and I'm like, oh, that's a character. Like, that's, that was Stevie. Yeah. And that happened years ago. I had read a story. Now, in this book, Stevie's, Stevie's backstory is that she has lost her husband and son in, an a, in a, in a uh, it was an accident, an accidental shooting. Mm -hmm. They were in a convenience store that was being robbed and they were shot. And she, but she was pregnant at the time and so she goes on for her daughter Cordelia, yeah. but obviously carries the pain of the loss you right. know, with her to this day. And it's been about eight years mm -hmm. when this book takes place. Well, I had, um, I've been reading a magazine, and this has got to be 15 years ago, that I, I, and it was about a woman who was pregnant, and she was watching the news on TV, and she sees a story about one of the, I don't know if you have them in this country, but they're, we have logging trucks. They're big, flatbed semi. They're like 18-wheeler trucks, but it's just a flatbed. Okay. And they carry just stacks of logs, timber. And I always I always think the worst when I see those on the road. I'm like, well, what would happen if the one of those cables would break? You know, mm. we'd be, all be killed. Yeah. Like, or those trucks that carry all the cars. Well, it was bound to happen one day, I think. Well, and I know, and, and, it, and it frightens me every time I see those trucks on the road. But the, the this incident, um, and it was a, an article I read about 15 years ago, mm. and it was, uh, um, this woman was, she was pregnant, and she was watching the news on TV, and saw that one of these logging trucks had parked next to a car at a convenience store and the cable had broken. And all the logs had tumbled and completely smashed the car next to it. Wow. And she recognized the license plate of her car. And that's how she found out that her husband and child had been killed in this accident. And the thing that always like ripped my heart was that the father, the, the last thing the father did was he threw himself over his child in the seat next to him mm -hmm. to protect her. I mean, the logs were coming down, but that was his last act as a father, was to protect his child. And that stuck with me. And the fact that this woman had to go on, you know, she was pregnant and she just wanted, she just wanted, she didn't want to go on at all, but she knew she had to for the life that she carried. And uh, I thought that's good. That's an amazing story and it's going to be a character. So I always knew that that was going to be a character. And when I started the series, I was like, oh, then that's going to be Stevie. Wow. So that's how I knew Stevie. Some of the other characters pop up completely unexpectedly, 